Hello and welcome to Hamster Guitars. My name is John Paul Burnett and these videos are an account of my build of the very first guitar that I've ever made. It is a bass guitar, a version of a Rickenbacker 4003. Now then, how are you doing? Well, thing thing is today I am cutting the headstock angle on the, on the through neck. Not a job that I've been looking forward to because it's many years since I've used a. Uh, did, 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 and so for that part I'll, I'll attack this in the same way as I've done it all so far I just be convinced that I can do it and then enjoy myself so over to me do some and sign and here we go. No, I'm not the world champion at fast sewing. I've learned how to do that film speed up thingy on me computer doodah. Now then, this was a, a, a time consuming job, but I've cut this part down really much, <laughs> but I actually got through it, did it slowly and I was very careful. Look at that. I am happy with that. That will be easy to take off. This was the first time I got to use this plane and it performed well. My desk, my bench is a bit, a bit rickety, but I don't matter. It's holding it nice and square and the plane is performing brilliantly. It only cost me £23 that plane on eBay. So obviously I'm, I'm well chuffed. Now all I've got to do is learn how to sharpen it. <laughs> well, there we have it. I've got it down roughly to where it needs to be. Planed it, plane works, <laughs> and we've now got the important angle. The one underneath is easier because it's not as important as that one. Still important, but that was the one that I was worrying about. And there it is. One headstock angle. Yes. Happy. That's me. Here we are, cutting the, the back side of the headstock uh, at normal speed this time. Um, again, cut down so I don't send you all to sleep. I was frightened, I'll be honest with you, about cutting these two with the answer, but I surprised myself with, you know, how it turned out. So, I, I kept checking to make sure I wasn't going over my line and just kept it nice and square. And then, I turn it so I can cut the you know the angle from the other side again this might not be the way you do it but it's how I did it and it worked for me again just cutting nice and easily taking my time Cutting and checking 
until the bit dropped off. And once it did, <laughs> I must admit, once it did, I was a very happy guy. Yeah, so, so, so. <laughs> We're coming up to the end of it now. As you can see that little piece drop off. There we go. Well chuffed. There we have it. That is the headstock angle. Com completely sewn. Um, and now it's all about putting the wings on and shaping it. Yay! Excellent. Right, so lots of work done today because what I've been doing, I've been working on putting the wings on the headstock, and here we have it. We had to film this, but I had to cut down the length of the headstock and then shape, you know, put the put the wings, what they call the wings, on for when I do the final shape. But they're on now, glued, and I'll leave them there for 24 hours. And tomorrow we'll take that off and we'll uh, see what the shape of the headstock's like. circular saw and then put two pieces of scrap walnut from this from what I cut off this middle section at the outset and kept them. Um, if you look at the shape of it you see if I put them two pieces together one on top of the other like that it would simply be the same as what I started with. But that's by the way, because what it's going to be like, says he looking for his template. There it is. What we're going to do is cut that to that shape. Now, can you see that? Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'll do that on the bandsaw. But for the now, I have to flatten all this so it's nice and straight. The best way to do that is on a flat surface. What I've got here is two pieces of 60 grit sandpaper that I've simply, where's that? Can you see that? That's it. No, well, I spray mounted it to this MDF. Now, what I'm going to do, sand this down until it's, well, exactly where I need it to be. I don't have a, a sander, so this is the, the best method I can use at the moment. That sheet of MDF that I've put on top of my bench is nice and flat. And as long as, as, long as I keep, you know, as long, as long as I don't rock that head, it will sand flat. And as luck happens, it does do. That part is, you know, the face of the headstock is obviously much easier to do than the back of it. As you'll see later, I used a different method to 
do this to the back. The wings that I put on were quite a bit thicker than the 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 body etc but that's why it, I needed to do this so that's the headstock nice flat sanded so now I'm marking out from my template the actual shape of the headstock as it's going to be now I've made this template from what well, as you saw in an earlier video um, from the plan so it's the actual size that it's gonna be here yeah, nice shot <laughs> uh, it's the actual size that is gonna end so I will just roughly cut round that leaving me a bit to sand off and I will then sand it down I've actually got some little sanding devices coming to fit to my drill uh, hopefully today um, and if they do it'll make it easier so there's me and my, my lovely bandsaw cutting out the shape now I'm well, glad that I was able to use scrap wood because you know I don't like waste and, and wood especially this sort of wood is very expensive um, some of, these, some of these parts are intricate and hard to cut um, but it, it's just patience it's just patience and sticking to the outside of your line and like you saw there let's just cut bits off at a time to give you more space to get in it was slightly awkward owing to the fact that it was on a slant now you know with the head stuck in it but you know if it if it's not exactly a square cut at what not because i'll sort that out with the you know, sanding discs that's coming once again this took me uh, a lot longer than it is showing here i uh, just sped the speed up the camera can't say sped nowadays because that word's also being changed to mean something else Strange word, but there you go. Now I'm doing a few cuts here because it was a bit, the, the angle was a bit hard, and it, and it just helps the blade. If if you cut it out like this, you know the wood actually gives a bit, and then it doesn't pull so much on your blade. I assume that's the theory behind it. That's what all the guys who know what they're doing on YouTube do, so that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Then, little cut there. Now, uh, back to the top of the head stop. And a bit there. You know, I've got to try and get a curve on. And again, when it gets to this really tight angle, I don't ask too much of my bandsaw. I, I simply come from the other side and then it's, it, makes, it makes the entire job easier and less stressful and if you're not stressed you're more happy so that's good there we are, just a final touch from this side and off it comes and here we are, we're starting to see the shape. Last cut. And for some reason, this angle was easier for me. It's the same angle at the other side, but I don't know. The, it, the saw just, just cut it a lot easier. Don't know why that is. But, shape check this out this is my new super Japanese rasp it, it's 
I think these are a fairly new thing. I've only just started seeing them. But it's like having a, a load of tiny little saws all together. And it really does take the stuff off. One side is more abrasive than the other. So it, it's, a, it's a great little tool. Followed by the more traditional file. I'll just, whereas, as you can see, I'm working on the underside now, and this is what I was saying about it being uh, a bit more awkward. Right. Today, I'm shaping the neck. I've just been on the bandsaw, and I've cut down roughly to the width that the neck is going to be. Um, and I'm now, I'm shaving the headstock to make the neck the neck blank match the wings that I put on it so they're all the same thickness um, and that's what I'm doing today and when we're shaping some neck I also ran earlier I also ran what is going to be the fretboard through the thickness there and I've now got it down to the thickness that I want it so the next thing I'll be doing with this will be taking the actual pattern which I'll show you Hang on. you can see this I'm, I'm not sure if you can but here is the markings out for the fretboard and what I'm going to do right. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to with the spray mount fit that to the top of to fit that to the top of the fretboard and then that will give me uh, the perfect fret lines for me to saw. I can just saw through the pattern. Um, and gives me everything else that I'll need to, uh, to do that. But that's for another day. Now it's sorting out this headstock. This is the different method I spoke of. Um, as you can see, this should be in a drill press, but for some reason, well, for, for the obvious reason, it's too long for my drill press. Um, but it's good for this. I, it, were, it kept nice and square, easy to hold, and all I needed to do was just keep, you know, turning it round. It didn't take too long to to wear it down, but it, you know it, it went it it made it a bit easier for me. Let's just say that. So I was glad I was glad that I had it, even though it didn't work with my drill press. I mentioned earlier that I've got some different ones coming. Um, they will fit, and it will make jobs like this an awful lot easier. But for this particular job, this worked absolutely fine. And, you know, as you can see, it, its shape made things like that, what I'm just doing then, easier too. There, all in all, it's done a decent enough job for me. Well pleased, I really am. And so back to the bandsaw, just setting the depth gauge, which keeps the blade nice and square. The closer them two things are together, and the, the least amount of blade you have showing, the better it is for keeping square. So this is the fretboard, and uh -oh, clearly I am cutting down to that template. 
that I cut out of my plan. That's the actual size that the, that the fingerboard will be without the bindings. Right, so now I've got to cut a bit off the edge so I can fit it in. Because I only have so much room between the back and the front. There we go. Look at that. Okay, now that's enough sanding. It's enough sanding for a minute because I'm covered in dust and my room looks like the Sahara Desert. Um, so, but as you can see, it's you know getting to nearer the shape that it's supposed to be. So what I've been working on today is this. Now then, what's this? This is my fretboard. And what you're looking at here is the part of my plan that has been spray mounted onto the wood that I'm going to use for the fretboard and it being cut down luckily to the, the size it's going to be I will then trim this off with my plate now this is the size minus the edging which I will put on after so what I'm going to start doing today is cutting these frets Here's one of them jobs that people don't like doing birch you know is what it is it's sawing and we'll just sawing down how I'm going to do that whoops this is my wonderful Japanese fret saw and so that I don't go down too far. I'm going to put myself a gauge on it. All highly technical stuff. No, I don't want you to tell me all fat. Hang on to there and then that will keep my saw nice and square. That's the theory. So here we go with the practice. As you can see, the guide that I'm using is um, the, the jewellers cutting device um, for my uh, inlaying stuff but it's got a nice square edge 
and as you can see it keeps my saw perfectly square and on the line and all I have to worry about is sawing it down to my tape you know, these Japanese saws are really really sharp and it doesn't take many passes for it to be down to the correct thing clamping it in place is, is a must you know having it so that the fingerboard doesn't move is, is an absolute must um, and it is now see now just it was a bit of a slight adjustment which just takes a couple of couple of little pulls through because these saws cut on the pull back not on the push forward um, I don't know if that's a thing with Japanese saws or, or it's just for these kind of things but it works better now I'm just going to show you one more where this is me clamping that into place and time spent here is essential can't rush this you've got to keep an eye on that so it's absolutely bang on that line now you don't go to one side or the other because this is very the curve of this saw is, is, is tiny it's just the size of the fret so you've got to be bang on the middle of that line so lots of fine adjustments clamping it into place and it's just down to the you know measure measure cut which you must follow you know you've got to measure everything twice oh, you only get one chance to cut it and with guitar making we get guitar making one wrong cut and hours and hours of hard work have gone so rather than you know having to watch me do every every last fret I simply now just showing you the last couple taking me is it, oh you noticed there that I've, I'd actually put the tape on the other side because it I couldn't see it, the depth before and I just set it to where the top of that piece of wood is and it made it a lot easier for me to see saved me a good bit of time as well I didn't have to, know, I didn't have to keep going back to it and now the the very last one 19 frets done one to go being equally as careful with this one as I was with the first one because it would be a toe of a job if, if I got to the last fret and then you know I made the monkeys of it which thankfully I didn't do it wasn't as hard a job as I thought it was going to be a lot of these things it's the fear factor you know you, you watch these guys on YouTube doing it and you think oh my god I can't do that but in the actual practice when you've got the tools you, you can that's it yay 20 frets all cut right now we're back to me sandpaper stuck to the MDF ply and now what I'm doing is simply squaring them edges off um, there's two things it it takes it down to the line and you know it gives you a nice square edge to put my bind into it takes a bit of time that was 80 grit sandpaper that I were using there and you know as long as you keep the same pressure on both hands it will it will sand in a, a, a square edge obviously 
I'm, I'm checking. I'm checking a lot because the, out of, of the band saw, um, it were a very you know wobbly cut. My, my skill on the band saw in, in what it should be, I don't suppose. But there you go. Yeah, I'm just checking a little bit off the middle because the, the, the middle was prouder than the rest, and it, you know it just makes it easy doing both sides and there you go look at that that's the fretboard ready for me to get the inlays and then to mount it onto the guitar whoa and here is the work up to press as we go up we have the headstock and as you can see the truss rod underneath with the fretboard and the ends of the truss rod and what will be the body. I do hope you found this episode interesting and carry on to watch all the subsequent ones. I'm enjoying building it. So to find out how I get on please subscribe to my channel maybe leave a like or a comment that would be absolutely brilliant thanks again for watching see you in the next one